let's talk about i want to talk about two other things briefly your leadership and then the, the so-called alliance surge and then i want to get onto the questions that, that we have um and some of the people in the call and um, you took over as alliance leader then in 2016 10 a decade after being elected as a deputy leader um did you ever think oh, i just wish david ford would go you know a bit of the sort of <laughs> prince a bit of the sort of prince charles thing it's been i mean 10 years in the deputy leadership is a very long period of time to be second in command no, uh, not in the slightest. Um, I had lots of uh, plenty of things to be doing and I actually was, it would be fair to say that I, I kind of encouraged David to stay much longer than he might have wanted um, because I was very keen um, that, that we didn't, um, that we didn't rush um, transition and I, I wanted him to stay on and to be honest if he hadn't made the decision himself um, that he wanted to step back I, I don't think I think he'd still be there now because I don't think anybody was dissatisfied or waiting for him to go or anything like that. I was quite happy in the role I was in, I enjoyed what I was doing um, and it it, to me, it was never, it was never a, I didn't aspire to be leader, let's put it that way. I did the deputy leader because it was a, a service, it was a, an act of service to the party. Um, and then when David stepped down, people came to me and asked me if I would run for the leadership. And um, there was an expectation that I would, um, but I, I hadn't been sitting at home for years thinking, oh, I just want to well, be leader. You, you could be forgiven if, if you had been. I want to talk about then, I mean, your leadership and how it's differed from predecessors. This is one of these questions that's asked of all political sort of people. What what was different about your leadership and what has been different about your leadership as opposed to other leaders of the Alliance Party? And I don't mean that as trying to get you to criticise other people. Clearly, every single time a leader takes over a party, they, they have different priorities. Um, what was it that you want that you changed and have changed, uh, 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 you know, over the course of being Alliance leader? You know, what is longism for what is... For, for, I don't think there is a longism. I think it's all. I think it's all basically alliance. Um, I don't think that I changed direction after David went. I, I don't think that's that's a, a fair reflection. We were very much a team, and you know Stephen was very much part of that team even then. What you know because he was kind of deputy leader in the assembly and he was a minister while I, I was the the deputy leader of the party, and so there was. I don't think there's a massive change of direction in that sense. I think we were in a different place. Um, I felt that based on our electoral performance, a lot of David's um, time in leadership, if you look back at the time he spent, was in trying to rebuild a party that had taken a real hit um, during Sean Neeson's leadership in particular, where there was a sense in the public mind that, well, what's Alliance for and what's the purpose? And it wasn't that Sean wasn't a good leader, he was, a, and he was a great elected representative, but people thought with the Good Friday Agreement and so on, well, maybe we don't need the Alliance Party anymore, maybe we're okay to just work with unionism and nationalism and the Assembly and everything will be hunky-dory. And I think um, David, kind of, when he took over, managed to re-establish what the party was for and what it was about in, in a very different time. For me, it's about it was about saying, okay, where are we now? So a lot of what David did was about targeting our resources in elections to make sure that we would keep seats, that we would kind of build a little bit, but it was mainly building in that urban Belfast area. Um, and I suppose my thing when I came into the party as leader was that I wanted to expand. And I said very clearly, I, I we've got to at some point take a risk. And that means moving resources outside our core areas to try and build in rural Northern Ireland, to try and build in Derry, to try and build in those places where we haven't had representation for a long time. We have to focus on growth. Uh, we have to focus on membership. We have to focus on getting elected representatives from those areas, not parachuting people in for an election, but actually people who live and work in that area and want to, want to work on, 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 in so politics. that was, I mean, I, again, I don't want to get into kind of, oh, David didn't do this right, but you came into the leadership and thought to yourself, I, I want to focus resources on expansion rather than um, kind of holding what you already have. Yeah, I mean, it was a different time. As I say, David was building up from the party being in a very weak position and it was absolutely the right decision 
that he made to, to make sure that resources were targeted. I still believe in target resources. And so, you know, if I, if I had been leading the party when he was leading the party, I would have done what he did. So it's not that there's a change of direction. I think I came to the party at a time when we were on the cusp and we could either continue to focus on building little by little in the immediate areas where we were strong, or we could take some risks and we could say, okay, if we're really going to do this, we're going to have to, we're going to have to really push out. Mm -hmm. And I made a decision that we should push out um, uh, and that we should try to build um, across um, Northern Ireland and do that proactively. I spent a lot of my time doing that, going out, working with associations and other things and rebuilding in those areas where we hadn't been so strong, simply because I felt that we were, we were in a position where it was a risk, but it wasn't as big a risk as it would have been maybe five years beforehand. Mm -hmm that we could still hold our own in the areas that we held yeah. and still give resource to other places. Yeah, let's and jump it forward worked. then, I suppose, to um, what some people call, well, the Alliance Surge, very good results in 2019 locals, euros and generals. How much of that, Naomi, is anti-Brexit sentiment and how much of it is a deeper identification with the Alliance Party? Well, I think, I think there's a bit of both, um, but I don't think the anti-Brexit sentiment on its own um, would again, you know, explain the shift to alliance. I mean, the SDLP are credibly anti-Brexit, Sinn Féin are credibly anti-Brexit, um, the Ulster Unionists at one point claimed that they were anti-Brexit. Yeah, but, so, but clearly, I mean, Unionists in particular would be much more comfortable with voting for the Alliance Party it, to exercise their anti-Brexit vote than they would either Sinn Féin or SDLP. But the places where we've made inroads are not just in unionist areas and unionist constituencies. We've also made significant inroads in areas that would traditionally have voted in, in greater numbers for nationalist politicians. So that doesn't really follow through. It's not that people had no other options. People who it was anti-Brexit sentiment alone would have could have voted SDLP and Sinn Féin, but they didn't. They switched. And so I think that there's an issue about two things. I think the first is that Alliance had to some degree caught a little bit of the mood that people had around frustration with the slow movement of politics because we are frustrated um, that we're still doing everything around two communities when actually Northern Ireland's much more complicated and diverse than that. I think it also um, picked up on our frustration with the fact that the assembly had collapsed, that we weren't able to get any progress made, that there were big issues that we need to fix and big decisions that need to be taken. And the best that we could do was, you know, two parties fighting each other um, outside with placards and nothing happening in the building. So I think all of those things contributed to it. And Brexit was part of that. But Brexit to us was more about saying, it was more a symptom of the dysfunction um, than anything else. And that's, for me, what, what it still represents. I think that the reaction to Brexit, the decisions around Brexit are a symptom of the dysfunction in our politics because, it, to me, it just shows um, how little consideration is given to the detail and the substance um, and how much of it is just a sales pitch. And I think we really need to grasp that. And I think people saw with what we were doing that there was detail and substance to the arguments that we were making. And I think that attracted people. I, I, I suppose, do think society is changing. Part, I do. Part, of my, part of my question though, Naomi, and I, I want to finish up mine now and go to Mark and to Cormac in, in a second. Part of my question is, if in the next number of elections, Alliance doesn't increase its vote share or if it, it, its vote share was to dip, is that because the moment in time had passed? And that, you know, that the, the furore of Brexit and the Stormont being down, is it because that had passed or is it because support really had dipped for the Alliance Party? Well, I think I think from my point of view, what we have to do, every every political situation is an opportunity for you to show who you are and what you're about. So whatever the crisis might be, whether it's COVID or whatever else it might be, you, you, it's an opportunity for you to show your values to the public. So if people decide en masse that they've had enough of alliance, then that'll be down to how we performed. And we can't, we can't kind of blame it on circumstance in that sense. But I think the evidence that we see is that that is being sustained, that growth is being sustained, both in terms of our membership, but also in terms of polling. Um, the evidence is that that surge is continuing. I don't take it for granted because anything could happen between now and next year. We need to do the work on the ground to be able to connect with people. And I think that personable end of politics is really important. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
you've got to take responsibility for what happens, for what your fortunes are. Yes, circumstances play a part in it, but it can't all be circumstances. And I think people are always trying and have always tried when Alliance does well to explain away the reasons why we do well. And so I think this time, because the improvement in our fortunes has been somewhat more sustained, it's a bit harder to do. I, I like to think for the sake of Northern Ireland, um, that actually what we're seeing is a real change in terms of how people view politics. And I think if that's what we're seeing, then that's a breakthrough because okay. there's an opportunity to really make dramatic changes at the assembly if we end up as the, you know, as one of the top three parties, that yeah. changes the dynamics. 